Fun. Hey everyone, Bill Benner here from Pangolin. Uh, as you know, we've come up with a really good new little scanner called the Compact 506. Now the reason why we call it the 506 is because it's a half inch or .05 in this direction and 06 in this direction, so that's kind of how we came up with that name. So it's a really small scanner. Here's your conventional scanner, your normal typical 6800 style scanner that used to be made by Cambridge and now made by a lot of Chinese companies. So you can see the difference here. It's a lot smaller in every way. The connector's smaller. It's just it's really a lot smaller. So another thing to take a look at is the size of the shaft. We can very clearly see is much bigger on our scanners and much smaller on the conventional scanner. And finally, the thickness of the mirror, which you can see is much bigger on ours, perhaps see it on the video, and, and perhaps see just how small it is on these conventional scanners. Now, the conventional wisdom was that when you make the mirror small and thin, that you made it light, but the problem is that when you make something so thin, it makes it really flimsy. And so that really winds up being a problem with a lot of these conventional scanners. So, so when, when the news came out that we came up with this new little compact 506 scanner, and we're calling this a 30K scanner, there were other people up on the forums that were saying, well, what about 40K? And I heard these things called DT40s, what's that? Well, as far as we know, DT40 is really just the model number, not really the, the K of the scanner. Uh, what makes a scanner a 30K scanner has to do with the torque to inertia ratio of the rotor and also the heat loading of the coil. That's really what makes a scanner go a particular K. We've designed our scanner to go 30K and we call it Compact 506. That doesn't mean it goes 506K. So, uh, so, but anyway, to settle the bet, there's been a lot of discussion up there in the forum of, oh, 30K, 40K, and I don't want to give up my extra 10K. So what we've got here is a pair of our compact 506 scanners running with a quant dual axis amplifier. On this side, basically on the left-hand side, we've set up as much of an AB comparison as we could. And on the right-hand side here, We've got a brand new set of DT40s. It was built into this projector. It's just been delivered to us. This is a projector like you find out in China. Many companies make projectors like this, um, such as the company Able Laser makes these kinds of laser projectors that incorporate DT40s. So what we've done here is we've tried to set up kind of like an AB comparison. We've got our scanners here on this side, the DT40s on this side, and we've got what is essentially our LD2000 system in a kind of a Y cable situation going to both projectors and to the greatest extent possible I, I've made things so that they have exactly the same size. So this really is a very good AB comparison. We're going to be projecting the same images into, this, in, into both scanners to see what happens. So, so I'll show you what, we are, what we're finding here folks. So this is the ILDA test pattern. Let me first show you the ILDA test pattern at 24K because that's something interesting happens at 24K I want, I want to show you guys. So here's 24K and as I start getting bigger and bigger and bigger one of the things that you notice is already the images look really pretty similar left and right pretty hard to tell the difference honestly there is a little bit of a difference here to, to my eye, and it's that the circle really is not very circular. It's more of a diamond shape here. And as we continue to get this bigger and bigger in size, we're going to come to a size where, with the Compact 506, we're still touching the sides of the, of the square here. And on the DT40s, it's not touching, and the circle is really kind of oblong. If you take a really close look here too, I'm going to remove this lens, you might notice that these lines really are not shaped. They're kind of they're kind of wobbling. This plus sign, the lines in this plus sign are not really straight. They're kind of kind of crooked and wobbling. I put this lens in here because the lasers in this particular projector are a little bit better than my original projector. My projector back there that we just used kind of around the shop, I've had for many years, and so so, so the green laser on it produces a bigger beam, so I've got this lens here so that we can try to make the beams kind of comparable in size so that this left-right comparison really looks pretty similar. So, so that's one of the things we see at 24K that we can project a bigger image with less distortion. So let's speed this thing up to 30K and see what happens. 
So at 30K, once again, you know, when, when they're projecting small, the circle and the square, all this stuff really looks pretty similar. Again, we see a little bit of wave, you see a little bit more wave and lines on here and there. So I'm going to keep the lens out here for a second. So you can see even that horizontal line is not straight. It's, it's waving around there pretty good. And as we get bigger and bigger and bigger, we can get hours up to, this is 14 and a half degrees on the Compact 506, which is really pretty impressive for a 30K scanner. And you take a look at the DT40s, this circle is not meeting the square. This is 30K here. And once again, you'll notice that these things are kind of squiggling and wiggling around. These lines are not straight. Right? Now finally, let me go up to 40K and see what 40K looks like. So here's 40K. And when the pattern's really small, for one thing, it's hard... It's, with a pattern that small, it's hard to even see kind of what's going on. But one of the things we found is that the DT40s can only do 40K at about five and a half degrees, which is where we are right now. You can see actually the circle's actually inside the square. This is five and a half degrees. Another thing you see is as we speed things up, these lines really are not straight. That, that green line across the top is very clearly wobbling around. So the quality of the projected images is not really all that great, in my opinion. You can take a look at what the, what the image looks like on the Compact 506. I apologize that the laser isn't really of, of, of a lower divergence, but it should be clear that the, um, that, the, um, that the lines are straight. So that's what 40K looks like. So, okay, so, so in other words, you know, kind of with your typical patterns that, that people would normally be showing in, in, in many cases, left, right, looks really pretty similar on the ILDA test pattern. Uh, to my mind, kind of favoring Compact 506. Let's take a look at a couple other test patterns as well. So, here's the laser media test pattern. And as, and this is going 30K, and as we make both of them bigger, you see that I mean, both of them really have pretty impressive performance. I, I'm really surprised that they're both kind of hanging together this, this good as we make them bigger and bigger. But there is a difference in that with the DT40, at some angle, we start getting into some overshoot here, whereas there's no overshoot in sight on the Compact 506. Even, even we can make it even bigger, and there's not going to be any overshoot on the Compact 506. And there's definitely overshoot on the DT40s. There's no question about that. So that's one of the things we're seeing with the laser media test pattern. Let me show you something else we're seeing with the laser media test pattern. This test was inspired by a guy named The Doctor on the forums. Um, and he was noticing that when he projects certain lines at certain angles, they, start look, they stop looking straight on his scanners. And he didn't really understand why it was that when you rotate a line, it became all of a sudden not a line anymore. It became a curve. And so... So, so I came up with this test as a kind of a response to him, and it's got really inspired by him. And, uh, and so what we've got here is the laser media test pattern rotating very slow. The laser media test pattern has, has a particular area that scans over itself in the opposite direction. And when everything's working right, it will remain a, a, a solid line, and you won't, won't even be able to tell it's two lines, but if something is not so right, it, you really start to see it's two lines. And now, as we start to make that laser media test pattern bigger and bigger, one of the things you see here on the DT40s is that this doubled line phenomenon. And not only do you see this doubled line, but this line in here that's supposed to be a straight line actually becomes more like the letter S. And this becomes more severe as we get bigger. This letter S phenomenon in here you're really going to start seeing. What this shows is that there is a point within laser graphics or even beam effects where straight lines stop being straight and start being curved. So this is kind of a neat test. If you take a look over in Compact 506, everything is remaining really pretty, pretty straight, pretty solid. And, it, and it, 
it, it is only when you make it really big on the Compact 506 that you'd start seeing that kind of phenomenon. So what this test tends to show is the Compact 506 is really better at producing bigger images. All right, now let's take a, a, another look at one more test pattern, which is the grid. So what we take, what we see here again, I mean, when when things are pretty small, they look really pretty similar. Left image and right image looks pretty much the same, but at some point, as we start to get bigger, we start to notice the rounding here happens to a much greater extent much sooner and much worse on DT40s than it does on Compact 506. This rounding in here. It rounds a little bit on the Compact 506 but nowhere near as much as it does on DT40s. So okay enough kind of banter with patterns. Okay, you've seen 30K before, you've seen test patterns before, you've seen all this stuff before. Let me show you something that you hadn't seen before, and not even I had seen before recently when we did this test. What we're going to do is something that's really, really pretty, um, pretty bold. We're going to take our original Pangolin creation demo made by Lightspeed around 1995. Lightspeed's known for making graphics that really stress scanners. We're going to show these pat these this whole show, whole show. It's about four minutes. We're going to show the entire show at full size, which is about more than 50 degrees from both of these scanners. We're going to show the whole show full size at full speed, and we're going to see what happens. You'll be able to see what real show content looks like side by side. So let's see what that looks like.
Okay, so I showed you we're going to see something you hadn't seen before. So let's take a look at this. What this is is a FLIR heat camera. And what we're going to see is exactly how hot the DT40's got when displaying these images. So the scanner block here is 42 degrees C and the scanner itself here is 43 degrees C. We'll take a look at the other axis. The other one is, let's see, here's the other scanner right here, about a bit more than 40 degrees C. Now, in the case of, now these are clearly bolted down to the projector that's screwed down. Now in the case of the Compact 506, what we've got here is this was all just kind of an experimental thing I'm doing. I'm just about to ship the scanner off to a, to a client. And so these scanners are sitting here on the stack of circuit boards. They're taped to the front of this projector. It, it, there's no real thermal path between this block and, and this. It's just basically sitting in midair. So let's take a look at the temperature of the Compact 506s. Let's see. And we are at about 35 degrees C. So it's running cooler even though there is no thermally conductive path between the scanner mount and the projector enclosure itself. One of the things that you might have noticed is our slogan at Scanner Max stronger, cooler, faster. The stronger comes from the stronger rotors, the stronger three millimeter diameter shaft, stronger mirror. That's what's stronger about it. Cooler, I've just shown you how our scanner, when it's doing the same job as a conventional scanner, is running cooler even with a less, less advantageous thermal connection to a, to a block. But what about faster? You say stronger, cooler, faster. Well, the fact that we're able to display wide-angle graphics without any curving and, and, and bending and that sort of thing says that we, we had to get there by accomplishing a higher velocity. In other words, it was faster, perhaps marginally faster in this case. Now remember, this is the least expensive scanner that we make. is actually one of the least expensive products that Pangolin makes. So, so anyway, I wanted to, to give you that little demonstration here, the Compact 506 versus your conventional galvanometers, and including DT40s, and so hopefully this will uh, help to settle the bet. Uh, is there really any advantage to going quote-unquote 40K? Is there really any advantage to quote-unquote quote 40K scanners? What we see is more ringing, more, uh, you know, distortion in the images, um, and, and, and inability to go as wide, so we don't really see very many advantages to quote-unquote 40K when compared with, with our little compact 506. Thank you very much.